usually shoot for the side of the glass just a little bit. Trying to get the pour started and then you can turn it up to see how your foam sets up on top of that. Get a nice little head. Jeff Thomas knows beer. I like taking it to the side. That one's got a little life to it, it seems. How often do you change your beers? Um, we're um, pretty consistently probably about a month out on the different beers that we have here. We've got two in the fermenter in the back right now. We've got a cream ale. Um, and let's see what else we got back there. We've got a cream ale, we've got an IPA, an imperial IPA actually in the back. Partner Gary Stiglitz knows a thing or two about beer as well. It's been said that there's a beer out there for everybody, you just have to find it. I tell people that if they come in, they say, oh, I don't, I don't like beer. And so you just haven't found the right one yet. Jeff and Gary's knowledge and passion for beer led to the creation of Thomas Stiglitz Brewery. Tonight, we're here to see if we can learn something about beer. In order for us to get a taste, we've ordered a flight of six of their current beers. Ta -da. Sour. Bacchus. So some Bacchus was there and the triples there. There you go. A flight just like that. Before we take our first drink, let's find out how Jeff and Gary pour their knowledge into these brews. Nice, nice, nice. I'm excited. Love making beer. If you spend any time with Jeff and Gary when they're brewing beer, you know he means what he says. We're doing an Irish red this afternoon, so it's kind of a traditional recipe. Um, two row barley, some black patent malt, a little bit of Maris Otter, and just a touch of uh, caramel 60 degree malt. Started filling tanks probably about um, just right around noon today. So. We get through this whole batch, it's gonna take, you know, probably between four and five hours, you know. We'll have probably about 33 gallons to boil here at this point to get us down to our 30 gallon batch. This should be a good one. We're gonna use um, Fuggle Hops, which is a traditional hop, woody, earthy, a little spice to it. I threw just a touch of rye into the mash. This passion didn't start overnight. Jeff and Gary have been brewing beer for quite a while. You know, I was, get, I was getting more and more interested in craft beer. And so I decided to try brewing some at home, and, and uh, after that I was, I was hooked. I come from a family background. My granddad was a home brewer, home winemaker, so I can always remember uh, bottles of a specific pale ale that he made at home that was in the basement that every once in a while, you know, you'd hear a cap go blowing off in the basement. It was pretty tasty. It was very clear, very yeasty, because he used uh, basically Red Star yeast to do it, so, you know, it's like a bread yeast, and um, it was good though. It was good, it was always cold. Um, he always had beer around the house, you know, old, old school German. How long of a process is it to learn just brewing? Really not hard, you know. It, basically the instructions are, are really simple, you know. You get a batch of grain or you can use extract, so you know basically you've got pre-prepared malt syrup, essentially, that you can just add to water and set it up and get it, you know, um, get it melted and get it boiling and you're ready to go. It, it's pretty simple, but you gotta pay attention. You gotta pay attention. You know, biggest thing, biggest thing about making beer is keeping everything sanitary and clean. All right, let's switch this around. Even though the guys say it's easy to start with your first home kit, be careful because once you start, they say your thirst for making more is hard to quench. I started out in my kitchen and my wife was very happy when I moved it somewhere else. Moved the fermentation and that stuff to the basement so she got her kitchen back. My wife bought me a couple of kits for Christmas and I went out and bought you know the the buckets and had a big steel pot at home and that's how we got started and like I said five gallon batches to, you know and got too big to be in the kitchen so went out in the garage and started doing you know 10 20 gallons at a time. Next thing you know I'm in the pool house and taking over the entire pool house with brewing equipment. How would you describe those first batches? Uh, they were okay. They were from uh, brew kits, and um, I learned pretty quickly to play around with them a little bit to um, improve what I was getting out of those. You know, when we first met, we were both home brewers, and we started talking about what each of us was doing, and, and Comparing notes, so to speak, trading beers, uh, and then we started. We were entering our beers in competitions and doing, you know, offering tastings 
sharing with friends and we were getting favorable feedback from it and um, he had already thought about starting a business and uh, um, then we started talking together and started doing some planning and we were about two and a half years yeah, totally. getting it off the ground. And how long have you guys been here now? You know, we're, up, we're about to hit a, hit a year here and um, officially, May was our official opening date, but we did a soft opening the first Fridays in April last year, so we had some stuff going on. Like Gary said, you know, we've been sampling beer around the area for probably the better part of a six months a year before that, you know, doing some tastings that were re requested by other people. What's the feedback been? Uh, general, generally very positive. I mean, everybody that comes in here loves the place. They love the beer. So, you know, it's, um, it's just getting the word out there and letting people know that we're here and in the meantime trying to get our beer into some local restaurants as well. That's right. Give the people what they want and give them more of it if they want it. So. And what are the, what have been the, I guess, more popular ones for you guys that you've seen? Um, you know, our flagship lines, the, uh, the Bacchus Honey Citrus IPA, the Fuggle Nugget Coffee Stout, the 10 Pin Cream Ale. You know, those are real popular. We, you know, and then some of the one-offs that we do have gone really well. We did a double IPA last uh, summer called Thunder, done strictly with Australian Galaxy Hops, and that was like, psh, it was gone quick. You know, so you know, some of the one-offs go, go over extremely well. We've got an Imperial IPA that we'll be kegging up this, actually we've already kegged. That's, that's on the gas right now. We've got another batch of Bacchus in there. We've got a Mexican lager that's sitting out there cooling its heels. So hopefully we'll pop those out here. And um, this Irish Red obviously will be ready for St. Patty's Day, which just happens to be on a Friday. We'll try something, and if it's well received by the public, and you know, we'll think about doing it again. Is there a taste for in the community for <laughs> styles and stuff? Yeah, you know, I think uh, people, people still come looking for IPAs, and they actually come looking for more sessionable IPAs. So what I hear right now, people coming is, have you got any Thing like Founders All Day IPA. So that's a pretty mild beer when you think about it. Really light on the hops. Other than that, it varies across the board. You've got people that really like dark beers that'll go for your stouts and your porters. You got people that want, you know, rip your face off IPAs, you know, that you can you can drink one and your tongue's dragging down on your chest. And we keep finding people coming through here, um, especially um, the ladies who find beers that they would never have thought that they liked before and you know it's in particular the coffee stout you know since we use um the electric brews cold press espresso to do that they do one especially for us and that seems to be a very popular one um our current ipa the the bacchus is you know more towards the malty side but not and so not real hop, hoppy bitter type things and people found they really like that too this is something that you created you're offering it to the public they're enjoying it um so it's instant feedback, it's instant gratification. Really. We get all kinds of customers. We get people that are very into craft beer and they have been for a long time. And then we get people that are just starting to discover it. And so they're trying to learn as much as they can. What is it about it that keeps you coming back? It's the creativity involved in it. Uh, um, there's just so many different styles of beer and so many variations, endless variations that you can do. Uh, and then I get interested in the science behind it, uh, this, the science and the fermentation, and uh, what, the, you know, what different hops do for it, what different grains do for it. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's a creative bug, mm -hmm. really, that, that keeps you going. I don't know if anybody's heard it yet, but we haven't quit our day job. So this is like weekends and nights for us right now. What should they be looking for? Just some simple things when... You know, for most people would say, you know, start out light. You know, you're used to drinking light beers. Find like, you know, what's the most non-offensive palatable beer that you think's on the menu. So, you know, pick it out by IBUs, you know, and as far as ABV, low alcohol. You know, and just go that way. But you know, there's some low alcohol beers that are really, really powerful flavors. But you work up, you know, never hurts to go light to dark. Any tips for new beer drinkers, old beer drinkers? It's whatever you like, you know. I mean, everybody's taste is different. And the choices are becoming so varied today that 
you know, that's why more and more people are finding craft beer and finding that, okay, there, there are types of beer that they can like. Well, like I said, we've had a number of converts come in here, you know, they'll say, oh, I never drink a dark beer. I hate dark beers. Get them started on the coffee. You know, it's like, oh, that tastes like coffee. Yeah, you like coffee, don't you? Sure. Well, there you go. Uh, as soon as it hits a boil, we'll add the hops to it. 14 degrees to go. After a little more than an hour, the brew is boiling and ready for the hops. The hop bag. In it goes. Take it and soak it up here a little bit. Nice. And... There you go. Hops are in. So we're going to let her boil for an hour. Chill it down and put it in the fermenter. Smells delicious already. See, you got that, got that nice red color in there already. It's going to be right where you want to be, and that'll look so pretty when it goes in the glass. It'll be ready for St. Patty's Day. We had started, you know, obviously with the beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy, in which everybody attributes to Ben Franklin. I hope that's true. As you walk into the bar, you can't miss the quotes from others who love beer just as much as Jeff and Gary. My favorite is the Frank Zappa one, of course. You can't be a real country unless you have a beer in an airline. It helps if you have some kind of football team or some nuclear weapons. But in the very least, you need a beer. Speaking of beer, we need to get back to trying ours. No, we did not do the wet hop blonde, and we did not do the burly girl. No, we, did. we should definitely try those two. Oh, I guess we did. Can we get a, we a, a taste of each of those? Yeah. We have a responsibility to you, our viewers. To try all of the beer. Are you up for it? Okay. It's a burly blonde. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, that, that good. that's sweet that on there. Good. I like that, it's good. That is good. Beer is good. Yeah, beer is good. Good made beer is good. Yes. But my English isn't that good. Stick to video producing. Okay. Having tasted plenty of bad beer, that is good beer.